morning and welcome to this morning's service on the fourth Sunday of Trinity. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. As we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries this morning, let us first pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, send the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So God loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us first call to mind and confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the songs of those who called to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jeshua, he said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not that the Lord in Gaza. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounty of field. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. 
from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson and luxury. Who put ornaments of gold on your apparel? How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle! Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. And this reading from the New Testament is in the second book of Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 7 to 15. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and utmost eagerness, <coughs> and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving you my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your needs. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you. But it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their needs, so that their abundance may be for your needs, in order that there may be a fair balance, as it is written. The one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have to live. This is the word of the Lord. In the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little girl is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She heard about Jesus and came up behind him. In the crowd and touched his cloak. 
for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still sleeping, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and raving loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give the sign. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Since the beginning of March, I've been the acting March people for portion, and all the way through, everyone's been saying to me, don't struggle, if you've got any questions, just come and ask, which is really lovely, you know, it's lovely to have that support, isn't it, when someone says to you, don't worry about it, just come forward and ask any questions you like, uh, don't struggle. Uh, but the further you go on, the more you realise, actually, you have no idea what you're going to ask, because you've got no idea what you're doing with it. So you, you need to try and uh, to get some sort of grasp of the job to be able to ask the right questions. And I sort of I see this in the faces of people when I go and do baptism prep as well. I go along to families and you know and I say, right, I'm coming along, I'm going to put you through your cases, and we have a long conversation, and we find out, you know, I find out what what they already know about the faith, and then we have a long conversation about, you know, about Jesus and his life and you know, quite often we go through Old Testament stories and and at the end of it, I always say, have you got any questions? And there's like total blankness coming back at me. And uh, I, and, and I'm like, no, of course there isn't, because you know, you bombard in these people with lots of information. And it's really hard, isn't it then, to actually really to discover what sort of, what is the right question to ask? You know, and that, that's what's sort of coming out of this passage, this gospel passage, isn't it? You know, we've got, we've got two people here, we've got Jairus and we've got uh, the woman in the crowd. Now, my other experience as a priest is, uh, is funeral ministry, of which we do a great deal. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, I, I meet so many people that say, that will, that will say things like, well, I'm not really, I'm not really a church goer. But they really need God at that point in their life. And it's the same with people that are given a difficult uh, or life-changing diagnosis. They say, they say, they come to God and they come to faith sometimes, which is lovely. Because they come to God because it's the last, their last, like the last hope, their last chance. And there's a little brain of them that believes that God can do something. In the same way that Jairus was the leader of the synagogue, and Jesus was really being slated by those in the synagogue, but he had heard about him, and he 
and he knew what he could do. And actually, he went to him. And it was like his last resort, my daughter's dying. Please come and lay your hands on her, and she will be well. He had this little brain of absolute hope that something could be done, had not let go. In the same way, the woman in the crowd had done the same thing. She tried to do this on her own. She'd been to the physicians. She'd been ill for many, many years, and goodness knows what sort of state the poor thing was in. But actually, she just thought, I'll fight my way through the crowd, and all I've got to do is touch the hem of his garment, and I'll be okay. And she was. You know, that must have been an amazing moment to suddenly feel completely well, out of pain. I'm not tired of feeling maybe full of energy and, you know, just revived and revitalized, full of life. That must have been an amazing moment. In the same way that when Jesus went and took the little girl by the hand and said, Can you be good? And she revived, she woke up. That everyone was amazed. It's like, that's amazing. And in these moments, we realise our vulnerabilities, don't we? And I think our main vulnerability is, like I said, you know, we don't always know the questions we have to ask. We don't know the question to ask of God. But the best thing is, all we've got to do is get close. We've just got to turn up and get close. And that's for whatever situation we have in life, isn't it? It's not during the crisis alone. It's for everything. To remain to fight our way through the crowd and get close to God and stay there in the jostling. Because we all want to be close, don't we? I mean, that's the thing. He was followed by crowds of people, but everybody wanted to be close to him. So we've all got to sort of jostle in the crowd to get close, haven't we? But we can do it. And we can do it through good times and bad. It's not just about a crisis moment. And so sometimes when I'm thinking about how do we express the kingdom of God, how do we express our faith in life? And it's actually not by being able to quote chapter and verse. It's not about having long, complicated prayers. It's about chipping up and saying, here I am. And if we can say that to others and say, you know, actually God is there for you in good times and in bad, and you don't have to know anything you just have to strive to be close you just have to chip up and say here i am and that's our vulnerability and the best thing is that even when we don't know what question to ask we will be given an answer it's a wonderful thing it's a lovely uh, reminder for us all that god is present in our lives all the time and does amazing things beyond our imagining. So let's stand to profess our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So please be seated as Marilyn leads us in prayer this morning. Drawn by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together for the church and for the world. We pray for the work of your church in suburbs, cities, slums, and villages all over the world, and in particular today for the church of Pakistan. We pray especially where there is violent opposition, complacency, or apathy, that all who work in your name may be blessed and encouraged so that many may find peace in your love. Close to the home, we pray for our bishop, Martin, Ruth, and Will, and for those ordained and priests this weekend, and for Angela as she leads us on our journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Living Lord, we pray for all areas of your world which are torn apart by hatred, violence, famine, disease, or religious differences. We pray for an end to war and a deeper commitment to peace by the world leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own communities that we may serve Christ in caring for one another in the place of our loving Lord. We remember our brothers and sisters of the Baptist and Catholic congregations as they pray alongside us today. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Merciful God, we entrust to your extended care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever they need to threaten, your everlasting arms are there to hold you safe. Today, we pray especially for our sister Karen and for Harold, for Rachel Hutchinson, Chris Peppers, and Jenny Smith. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Living Lord, we pray for those who mourn and for those who have loved and lost, and whose tears mine occur at this time, for many all who have died to the everlasting arms of the God of love, in whom there is life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, <laughs> reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by, or find his mocky busy and hear your heart's cry. His passing by this moment is your need to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Merciful Father, as the Lord is blessed, we celebrate your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Shall we stand to share the peace? <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us offer one another a wave of peace. Peace be with you.
Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and with all the power of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us into the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith and preserve her in peace. And bring us at the last with St. Dunstan, St. Stephen and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray gently as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
blood of Christ. Amen. pray. Eternal God, comfort of all the afflicted and healer of all the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Bishop of Chichester has appointed the Reverend Angela Martin as the next Archdeacon of Horsham following the retirement of the Venerable Leo the Winter. Bishop Martin writes, I'm delighted that Angela Martin has accepted my offer that she be appointed as the next Archdeacon of Horsham. Session to the Venerable here in the winter. Angelo has been one of the acting archdeacons of Horsham since the 1st of March 2021. In addition to being Vicar of Forest Row, Angelo will be responsible for the delivery of the Cookfield East Wings of Horsham and Hurst. Angelo's relation and installation in place of the cathedral in the context of the Eden Song on Sunday the 4th of July at 3 o'clock. Hence, because of that, um, we will be postponing the songs of praise next week, and it will now be on the Sunday the 25th of July. So next Sunday service, it will be at 8 o'clock here, 10 o'clock at St. Dunstan's, and that will be it. The, the, the songs of praise will be on the 25th of July. So can we give Andrew a round of applause? <laughs> Sort of a bit of a whirlwind, really. This only happens in Friday. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a couple of other things, just to say um, on Wednesday there was a healing service here at two o'clock. That, yeah, that's the first of the we, we starting that service again now, which is lovely. Um, if anybody still has the little tubs, you know, the little charity tubs that we, we, we put off coins in through the year. And, um, we are collecting them up, so if there's anybody still got them, if you can bring them back to church either here or at school, that would be brilliant. So I think we need to get them back in, because I think they want to bring back um, charity uh, clothes, probably is it by the end of the month, by the end, by the end of July, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we want to try and get it done in the next two or three weeks. Um, the only other thing to say is, the ma- I've, I've, had an, I've, I've had an email to say the magazine will be available from Thursday, which is the 1st of July. I don't know what's happened, whether there's been a hiccup or something, but they will be out on Thursday, so they should be in the back of church if anybody does um, let, let send them out. Thank you very much.
So, Peter, can I ask you to pop outside and see if it, what the weather's doing? Because if it's only drizzling, <laughs> we'll go out and see. It's all right, is it? Marvellous. So, what, what is that? What is that? What is our pin number as we go out? The pin is seven hundred eight. Seven hundred eight. Yes. So if we've got a hymn book in our hands, if we could find 708, and then we'll all stand and ask for God's blessing on us, and then we're, as Simon plays, we're just going to go outside to the forecourt, and then we can all sing together. And that's our joy, as we're still not allowed to sing inside. We probably won't be allowed to sing inside for some time, so we're just going to do it this way. Let's stand as we ask for God's blessing on each and every one of us. Christ, who has nourished us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up on the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.